Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Jams and Me podcast, Bjork Retrospective, where we go through, in chronological order, the discography of one of music's most significant artists, and we're tackling Bjork this year. We already covered her debut, debut, on a previous episode, so go and check that out if you haven't, but now we are coming here to arrive firmly at post. So, Riley, set the scene for us. Mm -hmm. What are we go- or what what are we going to see what was to be expected from post absolutely so we talked about debut about the auspicious beginning to Bjork's solo career that it represented we talked about how moving to london was a huge part of Bjork finding her solo sound getting involved in the techno scene working with artists such as graham massey from 808 state uh, getting involved with nelly hooper i mean both of these people are collaborators that she continues her work with here on post and in many ways What I would say about Bjork is that from album to album, and you'll see this as this retrospective goes on, she very much makes a point of distinctly moving away from whatever the previous thing that she did is. And Post is maybe the only record in her career where she doesn't so much move away from the last record as just does it better in a lot of senses, expands on a lot of what she started to do with debut, and I think finds a fuller vision finds greater confidence, which is not to say she was lacking confidence on debut, but I think it is even more assured here, such that while debut stuck mostly rigidly to the kind of uh, techno format, with the exception of a song like, like Someone in Love, I suppose, this record also kind of adheres to a broadly techno format, but makes more ambitious Uh, excursions beyond that and also not just beyond that but more ambitious excursions into other forms of music where she incorporates that techno as well you have arrangements and compositions that have more innovative chord progressions and selections and arrangements in general more melodies that see her really reaching and starting to really use her voice in more exciting and unusual ways you get more tonal whiplash from one song to the next on post. It's maybe like the most sonically inconsistent Bjork record, yet she finds a way to make that inconsistency not exhausting and bewildering. Well, it can be bewildering a little bit, but more just exciting and just invigorating, and it never really loses you at any point. I mean, if you consider, for instance, the first five songs on this album, you have they, they sound completely unlike each other. These are five completely distinct songs that have some DNA threaded between them. Like you can see how techno equally influences a song like Army of Me as it does a song like Enjoy, but they are both distinctly different at applications of Burek's influences. So what you get on this record is an expansion of those techno influences into various different directions in combination with growing confidence in her songwriting and her vocal performance, as well as moving outside of that soul arena. You have songs on this record like It's So So Quiet, which is a big band show tune number that is a cover of a classic big band show tune from the early 50s. You have songs on this record like Possibly Maybe and Isabel, these kind of two centerpiece tracks that are will not be unfamiliar for lovers of debut but have a kind of richer palette than anything on on those records and also a sense of of storytelling and and perspective and emotional encapsulation that feel more immediate for Bjork than they ever had before you of course have the absolutely incredible opener of army of me when you consider what a kind of confronting and almost ugly song that is in a lot of ways it's such a daring and and in your face way of beginning this record and i think to talk about this album we need to appreciate the fact that uh this was bjork's big breakthrough record this was the record where she started really charting high across the world and becoming kind of a global superstar and a figurehead of the 90s not just having this appeal in the UK, but really transcending it across so many borders and continents. And a big part of that was that Bjork is not just a great musician and a great album constructor, but Bjork is a great show person. Bjork is a great, Bjork understands not only how to make a good album, but how to master the album rollout 
how to master gathering and maintaining the public's attention and exerting artistic mastery in forms that go beyond just the song itself, to the music video, to the art, to all kinds of aesthetic peripheral stuff that isn't just extraneous to the record, but actively enhances its experience as a whole. And so we have the single rollout for this album where six singles were released for this record and each of them had its own very distinct, very recognizable and very memorable music video. And this is the sort of thing that we had a comment, a great comment on our uh, debut video recently where um, a, a fantastic um, comment that alerted us to some of the more peripheral aspects of what Bjork was doing and how she was kind of establishing her artistic mode. And one of those things included the music video. And I think that uh, to really appreciate what Post is and to really appreciate how Bjork is expanding her possibilities and her artistic the way that she's perceived as an artist, the, the kind of music she's associated with making, the kind of uh, personality she's associated with having, it requires her not boxing herself in. You have songs on here where she has this kind of like, you know, girl boss, fiery energy of someone who will absolutely stamp all over you in songs like Army of Me. You know, and that music video has her like driving a tank through a city and then bombing a museum. Like it has this real boldness to it. And you have the vulnerability of songs like Hyper Ballad and songs like Possibly Maybe, both of which were singles as well. Both of which had these incredibly memorable and, and stark and shocking music videos. You have all of this. You have Bjork taking the vulnerability of those songs and then like getting it across in a way that kind of subverts how you would expect. Like um, I Miss You, for instance, a song like that, or Isabel, or Enjoy, or um, even the modern things. Like you get a Bjork that is powerful, but vulnerable, but stripped back, but uh, naked, but also like kind of bewildering in all of these different ways. And doing that through a musical avenue that so subverts what you would expect um, those, those emotions to be communicated through. And I mean, when you compare Bjork to some of the big singer-songwriters of the time, people like Alanis Morissette and all that sort of stuff, and all of the real rock artists, you see that Bjork can master what they do, as well as 17 other things. And Post is, if anything, an album that is so loaded with these different visions of who Bjork is and what she can be and the kind of music that she can make that it's an absolute embarrassment of riches to try and pick this album apart. I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to leave off there and I want to hear from you guys about uh, your experiences with this record and where it sits in Bjork's discography for you and how you feel it builds on debut as well because we are kind of telling a chronological story of Bjork's art here. So where does this sit for you and what do you think of the successes of what this album tries to do? So to me, Bjork's uh, follow-up to debut. Well, debut, I think, is a very good record. I think it kind of loses me in the second half a little bit, but the first half is literally stacked with five mm -hmm. classics. But to me, post is everything debut is, but more and but better. And to me, it is one of like the absolute perfect records of the 90s. And I would honestly say that like, Oh God, I said this to a friend of mine once where I called it the nevermind of art pop, where it is just 40 something straight minutes of consistently great tracks back to back to back. I don't think a minute is wasted, even in some a song like You've Been Flirting Again, which is just a two minute, basically like an interlude compared to the tracks that's, that it's next to. Mm -hmm. It's so beautifully and so perfectly, like, unlike something like Nevermind, like, of course, this has, like, you know, different stylistic variations. But to me, everything, you're right, it's just as, every song is just as exciting as mm. the next. It's basically a master of music, just fucking laying everything down and telling you why she is the best. And she makes it look so easy too. I think Nevermind's a great comparison because uh, in terms of like cultural impact and like if you grew up in the 90s or if you experienced 90s culture somewhat during your youth, uh, like I was saturated in it when I was really, really young because my dad was just like playing all this 90s music all of the time. 
like Nevermind, it's this kind of bold statement from this artist that accelerates, you know, their reputation and then sets them up as this influential figure. But it's also a record where you're like, oh shit, that song, that song, that song. Oh, I've heard this song. I know this song. And it's just like back to back to back. You're like, oh fuck, oh shit. And there's like so many of those songs that, you know, whether you love them all or not, they're like classic song after classic song on this thing, that enduring hit song. And I mean, that's why I led with the fact that there were six singles for this record. Army of Me was the lead single, which let's take a minute to fucking appreciate what a fucking baller pick that is to lead the record off with that. Because that's a song that you could, that is a song that is so confronting that you could see reaching a kind of, um, you know, uh, putting an audience off potentially. Um, yet it also smartly, I think, capitalizes on the darker direction of popular music at this point in the 90s and positions Bjork as a figure who can merge that darker, murker side of things with her distinct electronic synthetic edge and her alien-like voice. Then second single, Isabel, which is a a crazy choice for a second single when you consider some of the other things on this record and then it's oh so quiet third like with these first three singles Bjork is deliberately picking these songs to bewilder audiences and to get attention and that's why the music video component is important too because B what Bjork is doing with this album is demanding you pay attention to her demanding you see her and demanding you uh, be bewildered and beguiled and confused and absolutely taken with her presence and her idiosyncrasy you don't get anything standard here you only get things that are creative that are doing new things with sounds that are combining things that might be more conventional or, or associated with different scenes with the singular female voice and, yeah. and that's what's so striking about post and I think only really immersing myself in the lore of Bjork and the career that she's had I've come to really appreciate what this album is and how this album does that Jake, what's your experience been like with Post? I think when I first got into music, I, of course, sought out all of the canon classics of just, you know, any genre. And the first two Bjork albums I was exposed to were, of course, Homogenic and Vespertine. And those albums are kind of so far off into the extremes that she explores later on that they just kind of went over my head is that I kind of recognize them as good albums, but they just... They, 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 I had no like basis for them. So when I heard that Post was an album of hers that was like simultaneously forward thinking, but also something that is like, you know, distinctly her, I was just like, well, I got to listen to this then because I, I want to get Bjork more. And I can sort of attribute a lot of my positive feelings towards her uh, earliest on to Post, just because this is like, in many ways, it's funny, we compared to the last retrospective we did, which was on Radiohead, where debut came up in the comparison favorably against Pablo Honey. But in many ways, I do think the arc of the that band and of Bjork is similar here, and that this is very much what I would deem to be her, the Benz, um, and that it's like mostly consisting of like excellent fundamental exercises of their her sound that she can take further later. But the thing is about Post is that I like Post even more than I like the Benz and I love the Benz. But Post is like, like take for example, for a minute here, the title, which is just, you have the plain title of debut, which is obviously meant to be like, oh, you know, this is signaling that this is a new stage for her as an artist. This is who she is. This is the kind of music she's going to make. And, you know, that's, you know, great way to, great statement there. And then you have the title of Post, which just sort of means, after but at the same time it sort of signals what Bjork's entire methodology for her art is going to be and that post is like I mean really it just means postmodern which I think like postmodern pop is how I would classify all of this you have the the heavy electronic techno of army of me which is you know awesome and then even like you know I, I think that even in the context of the album itself that's sort of deliberate obfuscation, that deliberate, bewildering, beguiling thing that she wanted to inundate people with and those singles choices continues onto the structure of the album. Because right after Army of Me, you have fucking Hyper Ballad, which, I, I mean, there are basically no two songs on this album that sound less alike than the first two here. And so you, you get there and Hyper Ballad just has these gorgeous like very subtle textures in the background of this song and this kind of like wave of noise that's just kind of permeating the entire thing while a bunch of other shit happens and man 
I, this is one of those things where it's like post is an album that like just kind of gets better the more and more I listen to it. And as a result, like, you know, debut is an album I like a lot, but that's, you know, it falls into my lower half of her discography. Uh, And while this is not my favorite Bjork record, it certainly lands confidently in the upper half for her because everything here is just so goddamn timeless. My two favorite songs on here are so like great diametrically opposed tracks I have. It's Oh So Quiet, which, yeah, I know it's a cover, but also this is just so quintessentially Bjork. Like I was listening to this as I drove uh, my girlfriend to work today. And then she was just like, there was a moment where she was just like, damn, that bitch (laughs) screaming. And I mean, yeah, but like, also, I love all of the personality she adds to this, all of the color, the big band, the screaming, the, it, it all feels, it fits her like a glove, even though she really hasn't gone this far into one aesthetic yet. Mm-hmm. And it's not the last time that there's sort of a big band feel on this album, but the jazziness, the, the opulence, and even the kind of emotional hysteria that she has on debut, it was a little bit more reserved. It was a bit more contemplative. And she was just kind of like, you know, she had a more aggressive side. But, you know, that album showcases a lot of her shyness. Whereas this album, I think, focuses much more heavily on her extroversion mm-hmm. as an artist, which is why you get songs like Army of Me, It's Oh So Quiet, or even the low-key moments on this. But um, my other favorite song on here is actually Possibly Maybe. And I love 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 the atmosphere of this song and it's also another song where you're just like damn tom york really did take a lot from this because this (laughs) sound it's like it inspired basically half of kid a like all of the atmosphere of this track is so radiohead and just the 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 verve the color like this album cover is perfect to me because it's such a like it feels like a contrast with debut of being like a picture that's kind of structured to have some sort of like mirror symmetrically but it's like there's all this color all this shit and it just perfectly evokes the feeling of what listening to this album is like it's just consistent heat after heat after heat i love every fucking song on this album without exception even the slider tracks on here are things that i've grown to love mm. I'm sad that august can't be with us because one of the great things about the song possibly maybe is that it kind of not single-handedly, but in a lot of ways, it feels like it gave birth to an entire genre, which is a genre that August and I really love, which is down-tempo music. And um, mm-hmm. it has this sense of loungy kind of beauty to it, but it also has this emotional resonance that comes through in the songwriting that is obviously quite potent. I mean, uh, Bjork is writing about her relationship with the artist Stefan Sidnoe. And what's powerful about that is that it's a song about you know uh, a lack of emotional connection in a relationship a lack of certainty about um love and the future of a relationship and the music video for this song which is another iconic music video was directed by Stefane, like directed by the person the song is about and so you have this kind of like very striking gorgeous sense of intimacy this is maybe the only uh, piece of media in which i can say that someone is pictured seductively eating a watermelon uh, which is something that Bjork does in that music video. And as she just finds this real sense of, of unique idiosyncrasy while at the same time communicating an emotional feeling that has so rooted in a pathos that's so universal and so easy to latch onto. And a part of that is the way that she communicates her emotions and the way that she sings almost as though she's singing to the viewer. Like I love uh, Isabel and possibly maybe back to back because both thematically in Isabel and then vocally and possibly maybe they have a fairy tale feel. Like they have this kind of like lullaby-esque quality where you feel as though Bjork is there in your ear singing to you, kind of uh, emotionally uh, soothing you in some ways. Uh, even as a song like Isabel is so much more you know grandiose than, than that would suggest. And in, to go back to It's So So Quiet, I mean, that's another song that is embellished and in a, a large part complemented by its music video, which is a Spike Jones directed video, which is heavily inspired by the films of Jacques Demy and the umbrellas of Cherbourg. And Bjork is kind of doing this big sort of Frenchy musical number inside like an auto parts shop where she's kind of dancing with the mechanics and and then just kind of running out into the street and it just has this she's wearing this very very vivid uh yellow dress that i'll always remember it's again she's so iconic with the fits as well something else that we have to uh, touch on more and more uh, as we go through this um uh, career but 
everything about all of these songs is made to be as memorable and iconic and, and beautiful and, and striking as it possibly could be. Uh, you've alluded to Hyper Ballad, which I'm just going to fucking, I'm flat out, I'm going to say it. This is my favorite Eric song, at least at the moment it is. So I mean, good. Yeah. At the moment Hyper it is. I mean, Ballad. there's so many fucking contenders, but listening to it this week, I felt like I understood everything that be your every creative element of Bjork's drive um, just from the simple sad gorgeous song it, it has so much texturally that I feel deeply connected to on a level that stretches right back into my childhood because this is a cd that my dad would play a lot and just that gentle kind of spacious tactile synth sound that you have at the start the way that's embellished by this quite unusual sort of like theremin esque synth melody that kind of bounces around the song and and Björk is just kind of fucking singing her lungs out about this feeling of needing to be alone and not kind of cloistered in this relationship the way that she vividly describes this routine of getting up early in the morning before her partner is awake and going up to a cliff and throwing her belongings off the cliff and listening to them hit the water and imagining what her body would feel like slamming against those rocks and it's kind of tragic and sad and emotional but you also understand that it's not really uh, a sad thing it's, it's a it's a cathartic experience for Björk to imagine herself in that way and to go through this routine and it allows her to exercise some emotional demons that lets her experience happiness and it's profound and and just gorgeous and and I feel so emotionally connected to Björk as she describes that experience and in the way that she iterates these lyrics and this chorus again and again and again and the vocal melody in the chorus the way she goes up and down and she lands on that safe again with you thing and and you have these strings that are rising through the song it's amazing how the song starts with that tactile synth sound and and just that and it ends with these gorgeously bloomed strings that are just taking over everything it starts and ends in these completely different places, it starts in this quiet, whisper quiet, introspective place, and it ends in this hugely extroverted, string laden, gorgeous place. And it's such a journey of a song. It's so, so beautiful and perfect. And, and again, the visual by Michel Gondry in the video of, of Bjork's kind of dead body and, and like superimposed over images of her singing the song. And it's just so like vivid and powerful and, and impactful and gorgeous and just oh god i can't get enough of this the way the strings are used here and then the way they're reincorporated in isabel is one of my favorite little like instrumental motif slash callback elements that unify two songs in this album because they are quite similar songs actually thematically fuck man and, and they're my two favorite songs on the album so there we go yeah and in the music video too, like it looks like her spirit is literally transcending or trying to transcend out of her body. Mm. So it's just it's like one of those gorgeous fucking songs ever written. And it's probably my third or fourth favorite on here. Like yeah. Bjork is one easily like top five favorite vocalists for me because oh. it's just a way she sings where I cannot explain it, but it sounds like no matter where, like in front of what track she's singing of, it matches each backing vocal perfectly, whether it's the aggression of Army of Me or just the pure enchantment of Isabel. Isabel, the, my, one of my favorite little moments on this record is when she sings and the fucking drums just slowly come in. Oh, God, and, yes. Um, and that fucking video, too, just that gorgeous black and white photography, mm. one of the... Uh, one of the absolute highlights, but real quick, I'll shout out my absolute favorite song on this album, which um, is uh, my favorite Bjork song always changes between these four. It's Stone Milker, Undo, Pluto, and my favorite song up a post, Headphones. Headphones oh, yeah. is one of the great best. shout. Such an underrated uh, song. Mm -hmm. Headphones to me is one of the most perfect songs ever written. It's one of the most personal songs ever written. Tricky, or at least to me, like it's one of my, it's a song that means a lot to me. Tricky's beat on this is so quiet and it's so sad, which is the, per which makes it the perfect closer after so much 
grand cathartic emotion it's a great way to like leave off with just a little bit of quiet and these lyrics my headphones they saved my life your tape it lulled me to sleep just the the lyric my headphones they saved my life i don't know to me like i feel like i have to have my headphones everywhere i go like just whether it be listening to music or wherever just like to help my brain just calm itself and a song that's basically just a lullaby of like the this music that i make and this music that i listen to it's a gift from you to me and it just helps me get through every single day these abstract worthless movements move 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 that's one of the greatest describing an abstract worthless movement as, as like that's just one of the most beautiful things ever composed. Just like, oh God. I, I, I completely cool. agree. Um, and also just the way that the album ends with that song and the contrast, like the journey you've gone through with all of this extravagant music and just to end in that way. Fuck man. So good. The good dynamism song. of this album is like, so it, it the the back and forth of energy it has that it kind of sustains itself and its structure is like it allows Bjork to explore every possible thing she could be interested in and since the energy kind of ebbs and flows the way it does it doesn't ever feel like abrupt or shocking that like all of these different instrumental palettes just kind of happen because the album sets no limits for itself it isn't interested in being shackled to one particular thing and it makes that abundantly clear um so early on which is why it's so easy to enjoy i mean and just the instrumental presence overall here i think the biggest problem that riley and i have with debut is that there are some parts of that album instrumentally that just don't really hold up with time there's just parts of it that haven't aged well whereas post is just the point where everything on here has aged immaculately the sound of everything and how big it all sounds and how intimate it can sound forecasts the next two records very well because mm. it gets the sort of you know the loud kind of techno electronic stuff that they would do later on uh homogenic but it also nails the stuff like possibly maybe which is way more in the like vespertine direction so this is a great moment for her as it signals like a leap in quality but also a leap in her artistic interest that signals something that she's going to do down the line and just overall like it's so consistent and so much like like even the shorter songs on here which again were kind of my least favorite ones on debut like um cover me i just love all of the little tiny details here and it sets up for headphones so well like oh, yeah. every time i listen to this record i fall in love with how well it flows more and more and it just it never stops being fun and and emotional and like, ah, it's just, it's like the ideal sophomoric record that an artist can possibly have is that they, it's more adventurous. It's just, it's, it's bigger. It's, but also it doesn't sacrifice that size for its intimacy, which is something that Bjork has always like showed an interest in is that there's no, nothing here that feels like it's lost amidst all of the, the, the cavalcade of craziness that all of this can, can become if you, you know, I feel like if it's easy to sort of misjudge this album maybe as being like messy or whatever, but it's like, this is the quintessential example of an album that benefits from the fact that it does not have a whole lot of consistency in it. The consistency mm -hmm. and the, the, all you need with it is just her. That's yeah. all you and, need. And the intimacy of it, like the intimate moments, that's how she connects with people, right? Because you could make a record that's this bombastic and all over the place and people would stop and stare and you'd have their attention for the spectacle of it. But how you keep them is emotionally connecting to them. And that's why songs like Hyper Ballad and Possibly Maybe were great choices for singles and were also songs that remain some of the most enduring on this record because they're the songs that people remember when they think about how Bjork makes them feel and how Bjork connects to them on an emotional level, which is not to denigrate the songs that are more about the bombast because people connect to those as well. But it's the synergy between those two, two different modes of Bjork that this record masters so, 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 so well. And I mean, in terms of the way she uses her collaborators to help her do that too, 
there's no better illustration of this than the fact that most of this record is produced by uh, Nelly Hooper and Graham Markey, I think, who are fantastic. Um, but the two songs produced by Tricky, and that's very fitting, Jake, that you got super into Max and Quay very recently because it's same great, energy. It's great prep for this. The two songs here produced by Tricky are Headphones, which we've already mentioned, and Enjoy. Two songs no. that could not be more different from each other. Enjoy is such a fucking banger. It's a rager. Like, it's super industrial and loud, and her voice is just, like, so, like... Like, it, her voice almost gets has the feeling of, like, being swallowed up by, like, the machinery of the song, but kind of just soaring through it as well when she said, I'm shy! Like, she just is so great at doing that. But like, think about how different, what Tricky's approach is musically on these two songs. Like one is this, they're just completely different from each other. And so that speaks, I think, to her ability to take her collaborators and take their many strengths and know how to get the most out of them for what she needs. And, and I mean, what else is there to say beyond that? I mean, it's just, it's a masterful record. It's a record that completely yeah. nails everything that it's going for. And I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a triumph i mean you can one cool thing way of comparing this to debut is you think about a song like big time sensuality which we were critical of the sound of but we spoke mm. about the lyricism of that song and the sentiment of like embracing uh this broiling feeling inside of you and and the the potential that you have and the emotion of power you have and that's kind of a there's a seed of that in that song and then you compare it to something like uh it's oh so quiet we are that seed of joy and ecstasy and euphoria your existence in the world around you has bloomed into this massive explosion and right there you have a microcosm of how po post compares to debut and that is the triumph of this record is that no it doesn't dramatically radically shift away from what debut is doing but it shows you the potential that of that record fully realized and i just the fact that it's not maybe not even my second or third favorite Bjork record no. i mean that you're all going to have your own particular eras that you gravitate towards but i think maybe in a lot of ways post is the album everyone should start with in a lot of yeah, respects because agree. you get yeah. everything that you could possibly want or not want and you can choose from there where you want to go man what a fucking album it is a celebration of music. That's yeah, like, that's, yeah. that's, it just feels overwhelmingly joyous and in love with the medium that it's a part of. And again, this is not even top three for me. And I, 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 and I love capital L, love it. Yeah. It's just, it's one of the greatest. And like you go, going back to the It's So Quiet, It's So So Quiet music video, it starts off in, the grimiest bathroom imaginable and through there you just have n singing and dancing and magic and just celebration and joy and that's why the this album is to me and it's one of the greatest beautifully said oh well shall we move in then to our favorite tracks and ratings jake why don't you kick us off all right well my three favorite tracks on posts gotta be Possibly, maybe, is my favorite song on here. It's So So Quiet is a probably close second place. And, oh, God, this is this is a, an album that's just full of perfect and near-perfect songs. I'll... Uh, I'll plot and say Isabel. Yeah, that, that once you punch of Isabel and possibly maybe is just fucking unfucking paralleled uh, Least favorite... You know, if I had to pick a least favorite, uh, funnily enough, I, I think it's probably Army of Me. I, I don't really like dislike it less than or more than any of the other songs. It's just that that's the one that I get the least out of, I guess. Maybe it's the, the closest sonically to feeling a bit too of its era, but even then it just kind of kicks ass. So who gives a shit? Yeah, it's a nine out of 10 for me. Hell yeah. Um, Morgan's three favorite songs are Army of Me, Hyper Ballad, and Possibly Maybe. Morgan's least favorite is The Modern Things, and Morgan gives it an 8.5. My uh, three favorite songs are Hyper Ballad, Isabel, and Army of Me, in that order. My least favorite is uh, Probably You've Been Flirting Again, and it's very close to a nine, but I'm going to give this an 8.5. Uh, absolutely, absolutely stunning, stunning album. My three favorite tracks, my favorite is Headphones, 
And after that, I guess yeah. it'd be Hyper Ballad and then um, yeah. Isabel. <laughs> mm. like, and uh, I have no least favorite. I don't want to pick a least favorite. Everything on here, listening to this album again made me happy. And it's probably only my third favorite Bjork album. Fucking 10 out of 10. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm glad we have a 10 for this because yeah. it really needs to have someone giving it a 10 here. All right. So that means we have an average of 9.0 for Bjork's post. That's yeah. what I like. Let us know at home what you think of post. How does it go in your Bjork ranking? What is your experiences with this record? What's your relationship with this record? How does it compare to Bjork's other records for you? We want to hear from you in the comments below. So please let us know how you feel. Go and check out our debut episode as well if you have not already. We'll put a link to the Bjork retrospective playlist in the description below. Remember that new episodes of this series will be up every other Thursday. So two weeks from now, we will be tackling homogenic and continuing from there if you like the video if you enjoy what we do please consider hitting the like button please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already especially if you like the idea of a bjork retrospective make sure you sub and hit that bell so you don't miss the next one when it drops if you really enjoy what we do and you want to support us even more you can hit the join button and for just one dollar a month you can support the channel you can have your name featured in the title call of every video on this channel you get priority comment response. And if you want to give us a recommendation, your recommendation will go to the top of the pile. However, until next time, rock over London, rock on Chicago, MTV. I want my MTV. <laughs>